Hello everybody and welcome back uh, to our Fat Fact series. I'm Ted, your host, and for this Fat Fact, we're going to be covering the Double V campaign. Now, the Double V campaign was a, um, a very personal community campaign launched by the African American community during the World War II years. Um, with the declaration of war against Nazi Germany, uh, the African American community was emboldened and this leadership, the, the leaders of uh, really the national community, um, the community at the, at the national level decided to embark on the Double V campaign to defeat the fascist powers, the Axis abroad, and racism, Jim Crow, rampant discrimination, the open, the naked discrimination at home. Um, they, they were, it, it was really a, a very blatant campaign. Um, there were a lot of glaring similarities between Nazi, anti-Semitism, uh, and African American racism, uh, the racism uh, the, um, used against African Americans, the, the Jim Crow segregation of the United States. Um, and, and they were very quick to point all of this out. Um, membership in the anti discriminatory organizations, uh, such as the NAACP, exploded. Um, for uh, um, the, the exact numbers are 40,000 um, NAACP members in 1940 and five years later, five years into this Double V campaign, membership was over 400,000 with 450,000 in 1945. Um, new organizations were founded as well. Um, A. Philip Randolph. Uh, A. Philip Randolph in 1942 founded CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality, which would have a, uh, a very long life and a very productive career um, as a civil rights organization. Um, core, core differed greatly from the civil from the uh, civil rights organization from the anti-discriminatory leagues of its day. Um, from the very beginning, they had been very conciliatory. Um, they had approached uh, civil rights with a with a um, a non-confrontational attitude. Uh, Frederick Douglass was deemed as uh, extremely confrontational. He was deemed as an agitator during his lifetime, but uh, when you really examine his career, it, it really wasn't um, as in-your-face as other um, movements of his day. Um, very, very tame. Uh, the antics of Frederick Douglass are very, very tame when compared to organizations like the Ku Klux Klan and other Redeemer groups and, of course, the Fire Eaters in the campaign that the Fire Eaters launched um, in, uh, in, in the wake of Abraham Lincoln's election in 1960, in uh, 1860, sorry about that. But, uh, but CORE, CORE, very different, took a very hard militant stance um, on civil rights. Uh, CORE um, eschewed lobbying. They, they would not lobby, they would not go to meet with people, they would not try to influence uh, leaders by, by, by uh, simply, you know, um, going in and, and trying to barter for, for, for these leaders to, um, to endorse them and to sort of fight for their cause. CORE would, CORE would not look towards uh, court cases. Um, the Brown, uh, not the Brown, the Brown case was years off, and the Brown case would be one um, push, uh, uh, push, pushed forward by the NAACP. But, but, um, but CORE looked back to all the cases from Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896 up until 1942. And in every one of the cases in which African Americans had sought um, relief through the courts, it had been flatly denied. Jim Crow had been, uh, had been reinforced. So they eschewed, um, they, they eschewed uh, political lobbying and they eschewed uh, the legal tactics and they opted for direct confrontation such as sit-ins and street protests. Uh, two forms of, of, of pro, two forms of um, what, we, what we would later call civil disobedience, um, what we would later classify as civil disobedience, two forms of protest that still enjoy regular popularity and will go on to play a major role in the civil rights confrontations in the 1950s. Um, those, those were two, uh, two strategies, um, two, two stratagems employed by CORE um, and, and, that, uh, and two that they much prefer to to uh, to endeavor upon and and uh, core had this great effect on local businesses in Washington D.C. in particular, where a picket campaign, a street protest picket campaign, got the businesses in Washington D.C. to integrate uh, over fear of loss of business and, and just a, a black eye um, for for them and uh, and for 
and, and for their uh, their local reputation, for their international reputation. D.C. is the capital, and during the war years, there were a lot of um, diplomats, a lot of correspondents in the city. Um, and that's our quick, fast fact. There's a lot more that can be said about the Double B campaign and, of course, A. Philip Randolph. Um, but, uh, but that'll do it for our fast fact. Hit like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what in particular you guys thought was interesting about this fast fact. And I am Ted, and I will see you guys next time for another fast fact.